And now, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to welcome on stage Yang Berbahagia, Datuk Syed Zaid Alba, Chairman of the Securities Commission Malaysia, to deliver his opening remarks. Dipersilakan, Datuk Syed. Yang Babagia, Tantri Zarina Anwar, Chairman of Institute of Corporate Directors, uh, Malaysia. Distinguished uh, guests, speakers, ladies and gentlemen. A very good morning to all of you here today. It gives me great pleasure to be here this morning and I would like to thank Tantri Zarina and the Institute of Corporate Directors Malaysia for inviting me here to officiate the inaugural International Directors Summit 2019 entitled The Trust Compass Resetting the Course. The establishment of ICDM in 2017 was part of the SC's corporate strategic priority for 2017 to 2020, which is in order to forge the alliances between corporate directors in enhancing directors' professionalism and governance standards. Drawing from the success and positive impacts made by the Institute of Directors of other markets, such as Thailand, Australia, the United Kingdom, and Singapore. The SE's vision for the ICDM is to be managed by directors for the directors. And I am happy to note that the progress made by ICDM thus far, including the development of highly relevant and content-rich programs for experience as well as aspiring directors alike. As the Institute of Corporate Directors, recognized by both the SE and the Bank Negara Malaysia, ICDM is well placed to meet the professional needs of the directors, which includes the management and delivery of newly appointed directors of listed companies, such as the Mandatory Accreditation Program, or MAP in short. And the SC is in full support of uh, ICDM's application for the MAP course. I would like to commend Tantri Zarina and the board members and staff for their dedication and commitment and for the progress made in this institution forward for the betterment of corporate governance in Malaysia. Ladies and gentlemen, in my address this morning, I would like to focus on two important issues confronting corporate Malaysia today, namely the importance of board activism, which includes the role of the independent directors here, and secondly, how boards can do well by doing good itself. Now, in the last decades, as the regulators, including the SE, have actively promoted the need for shareholder activism. However, as the business ecosystem continues to evolve ever so rapidly, Board activism today is required and is crucial to ensure that the company remain agile and relevant. In short, the business of business is changing, and I believe it is for the better. Since the dawn of the Industrial Revolution, studies have shown that business enter into a new era roughly every 50 years from the rise of the railroad companies in the 1830s 
to businesses ran by professional managers today. As we approach the year 2020, the corporate world is indeed facing a new dawn. I'm sure all of you here this morning can relate to the fact that the business environment has become a much, much more dynamic, which means that the requirement for tomorrow's successful companies will be different from that of today's. A study by, a study by the Boston Consulting Group highlighted that businesses today go through change in their life cycle twice as quickly as they did 30 years ago. Companies in the United States, for example, have a one in three chance of failing in the next five years. This is up from one in 20 and 50 years ago. This reflects a shrinking life expectancy of companies, which is in order to stay relevant, the report states that it is very imperative for companies to adapt strategies to the environment, retune themselves to changing situations, and build resilience to sustain adaptiveness. In order to do all of the above, board must understand the disruptive trends emerging in business today you must be able to challenge the assumptions underlying management's strategy and help management identify new growth paths. While in doing so, it is critical the board maintain its independence of mind and position to enable them to exercise effective oversight of management. Well, being legally qualified, I can say that while the law does not actually contain a specific definition of what an independent director is, there is, however, a Cadbury report which describes an independent director as one who should bring an independent judgment to bear on issues of strategy, performance, and resources including key appointments and standards of conduct. For non-executive directors today, I'm sure that you are aware that as far as the law is concerned, the core duties of executive and non-executive directors are one and the same. All directors are expected to exercise their powers for proper purpose, in good faith, in the best interests of the company, and whenever such a, a conflict situation arises for each and every one of you, directors, you must, <clears throat> you must be able to do your best judgment in exercising what is good for the company and not what is good in your own personal interest. Now, in entities and institutions which are clothed with the public interest mandate, public interest directors are expected to exercise their powers to promote public good above all else. The independence and good governance of public interest directors are expected to be more profound in case of such cooperation, for example, Bursa Malaysia. Ladies and gentlemen, I must say that as a result of SCs and Bursa effort, Malaysia's corporate governance system has improved for the better. Since the days when I was first appointed to the board of uh, listed companies in the late 90s, I can remember that uh, the standards then and the standards today are totally and vastly different. 
and that is thanks to the SCE. However, I still think that there is room for improvement. The attitude of board members must not be to view their position as merely one of privilege or a recognition. Rather, it is a position which is inherently filled with a heavy responsibility, which, if not properly discharged, may, I'm afraid, lead to a liability. Now, moving forward, the question you have to ask yourself today is whether your board has the skills, experience, and diversity required to navigate the company through these challenging times? Is the board able to engage meaningfully with management on emerging dis issues such as disruptive technology and climate risks? In order to promote and drive board activism and corporate agility, the SC corporate governance efforts will remain focused on, amongst others, enhancing board diversity in terms of background, experience, functional skills, and gender. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, with that, let me now move on to discuss how, in my view, companies can do well by doing good. And I would like to anchor this discussion on the 12th Malaysia Plan, which is premised on the Shared Vision 2030, recently announced by the Prime Minister on 5th October 2019. In the next five to 10 years, economic empowerment and environmental sustainability will be at the forefront of our country's economic growth. According to Oxfam, the wealth divide between the global billionaires and the bottom half of humanity is growing upwards quite staggeringly. Between 2009 to 2017, for example, the number of billionaires it took to equal the wealth of the world's poorest 50% fell from 380 to a mere 42. And in 2018, in the United States, three in men held combined fortunes worth more than the total wealth of the poorest of all Americans. The World Economic Forum in 2018 states that the global pay gap between men and women will take 202 years to close. Women today found to be paid just 63% of what men earn. With massive influx of natural disaster, warming and cooling periods, changes in weather patterns, we need to play our part in addressing the environmental, in addressing the environmental problems our planet is facing today. Pollution, global warming, natural resources depletion, and waste disposal, to name but a few. As a component of the nation's economy, listed companies will play a critical role in ensuring that our country's vision share, that our country's vision of shared prosperity and environmental sustainability is achieved. For growth to be sustained over the longer term, corporate need to balance the interests of the business society, and the environment. The agenda of the corporate business of the world today should not solely be about 
making profits. It has to be tampered with sustainability, which includes the interests of the society and the environment. I must say that I'm happy to note that a growing demographic of socially minded consumers, businesses, and investors are driving companies to demonstrate and adopt an integrated and strategic approach to addressing sustainable risks and opportunities, including impact of climate risks, thus the need to reset the trust compass. A 2019 Edelman Trust Barometer survey on brands we trust found that today more than 70% of consumers consider a company's reputation, values, and environmental impact before making a purchase. I would like to reiterate that the business of business can no longer be just business. It requires an equation of corporate value that goes well beyond delivering predictable profit and a stream and a steady stream of dividend, but one which is inclusive and integrate sustainable sustainability strategies and considerations. On the issue of shared prosperity, I urge all of you to take cognizance of the expenditure guide for Malaysian households, or Blanjawan Ku, issued by the EPF recently when framing your pay, your employees' pay structure. Now, according to Blanjawan Ku, an employee who is single and uses public transport daily to work requires an estimated budget of 1,870 ringgit a month to lead an acceptable standard of living. On the issue of environmental sustainability, Bursa Malaysia launched a sustainability framework sometime in 2015. This requires listed issuers to disclose a statement of mitigation of material sustainable risk affecting the company. A review of these statements showed a high compliance level to up to about 90%. But I would strongly argue that we can further improve the quality and the depth of the disclosure, where the average score was a mere 49%. Now, as board members, I urge you to review these disclosure standards and ensure that they are meaningful and accurately reflect the practice and the condition of the company. Our action must speak louder than words. Ladies and gentlemen, underpinning all these new imperatives, are the fundamental principles of corporate governance, such as board leadership and effectiveness, effective audit and risk management, integrity in corporate reporting, and maintaining meaningful relationship with stakeholders. The SC continues to focus our measure on strengthening the corporate governance of standards of listed companies to prevent corruption, misconduct, and fraud, and preserve the trust of the stakeholders. On the issue of voluntary adoption of best practices in Malaysia Code of Corporate Governance, like uh, <clears throat> Tunku Zarina has said, uh, I'm very much encouraged to note that there is a steady increase in the participation of women on board of the top 100 companies. And uh, further, 
long-serving independent directors have either resigned from the board or were redesignated as non-independent directors, which creates new pathways for companies to refresh their boards. In July this year, with the government, in line with the government's effort on anti-corruption, the SC presented its plan to the Cabinet Special Committee on Anti-Corruption, which is chaired by the Prime Minister himself, to, with recommendation to strengthen the standard of corporate governance to prevent corruption, misconduct, and fraud. The action plan will comprise of measures to strengthen the anti-corruption initiatives of listed companies, including having a whistle-blowing policy in place. The SE will also develop the framework to promote the effective discharge of director's responsibilities. Ladies and gentlemen, as I end my speech here this morning, let me leave you with a question to ponder over the duration of the conference. Are you and your boards and management ready to face the new dawn that is upon us? And with that, I would like to thank uh, ICDM once again for inviting me to this morning's uh, conference, and I wish you a productive summit ahead. Thank you very much.